lecture for Discover Geography. These lectures will support your understanding of the class but are in no way an excuse or a substitute for the reading assignments. In the first module, what we're going to be talking about is an introduction to the class, a little bit about the nature of geography, and then in the subsequent module one uh, mini lectures, we'll be talking about geographer's tools. Today, though, uh, in this first portion, what I simply want to talk about is the kind of the expectations of the class, and then a little bit about the nature of geography. So, first of all, again, this is a survey level course, and if you're seeing this, this course sometimes is offered uh, asynchronously, uh, oftentimes in the summer, or it may be offered synchronously, that is that you come to lecture uh, and we'll discuss things, and then these serve as kind of a support to that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about assessment, and again, this is assessment um, may vary across different classes. My expectations for you to succeed, a little bit about me, um, and some ways to think about your own information. And then again, in the next lecture, we'll be talking about a little bit about geography as a spatial science. What does that mean? So let's get started here. So uh, my information, again, my name's Jack Livingston. Uh, I'm a professor at Slippery Rock University. I've been here, again, this is 2021, so I've been here 20 years, uh, almost 21 years at this point. Uh, I should just finish that. And um, in terms of who I am and what I am, I am a geographer. I earned my PhD in geography from the University of Kansas. Most of my research is, in fact, on environmental change, land cover dynamics. Uh, particularly, I'm interested in the biogeography, that is the distribution of life on the planet, um, in association with the semi-arid regions, that is prairies and scrublands. I'm also uh, the coordinator of the drone program or the small unmanned aerial systems program at SRU, as well as teaching uh, courses in geographic information systems for environmental monitoring. I am uh, to some degree a spatial statistician and then I do a little bit of work, kind of the kind of the fun part, I suppose, would be a geography of distilled spirits. I do uh, research in that area. All geographers tend to have regional emphases. Uh, mine happens to be in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, as well as in far western China. So that's a bit about me. Now, in terms of where I'm from, um, I'm actually I grew up outside of Chicago. And so we, we often will think in this class uh, about where you're from and how the where of you informs you. So what is geography? Well, first of all, quite simply, geography is the study of phenomena. That is literally just about anything. But the location of the phenomena, their distribution, that is kind of where things are, and then the processes that influence those locations and distributions. So if you want to think about it, it's what's, again, could be saxophones or giant sequoias. The where's of those, in other words, how are uh, saxophone players distributed in the United States? Or where are jazz clubs in the United States? Or where are sequoias located? Or where are prairies? But the most important thing in geography is why. Why did or does jazz exist as a dominant music form in certain areas and not in others? Or why do grasslands extend into Indiana historically, but not as far as Pennsylvania? So it's the whys of those things that become very, very important. The study of phenomena, their distribution and location, and the processes that influence that. So again, we might look at things like vacant housing and abandonment in Detroit. And if we look at Detroit proper, what we see is that if we look at these, and again, vacant and possibly vacant houses, and if we look at it at this scale, we see that it looks kind of, you know, it looks like they're just kind of randomly scattered about. But if we begin to drill down, what we begin to see is that entire areas have in fact had their houses abandoned. And in fact, in the city of Detroit, many of these houses have been removed. And then other areas have almost no abandonment. And the question becomes why? Why did abandonment happen so deeply in certain neighborhoods and not in others? We look at them in terms of the details of it. In other words, this literally is Robin Wood Avenue, and what has happened in Detroit is, in fact, they've removed the houses. This used to be a vibrant neighborhood uh, the better part of a century ago. And so what happened? Why aren't there houses here? 
We might also look at it from the standpoint of how people perceive space. And what this is, uh, again, just kind of a fun thing, this is the location of all of the bars in kind of the downtown Chicago area. And when we look at the success of different establishments, uh, cocktail bars, if you will, um, it, it is influenced by another phenomena, that is the rapid transit system in Chicago. Where the rapid transit stops are, and frequent stops, does influence where certain types of businesses establish themselves. So we begin to look at these relationships. Now, if we look a little bit, again, sometimes it's important also to look at the macro scale. And here what we notice is that bars in Chicago, you'll notice this is the cluster we were just looking at, but they also tend to have certain cluster distributions in the North Shore region, but then dramatically drop off as we move westward, and especially into certain types of neighborhoods. And so again, we might ask the question, why? We might ask it in terms of densities. And here we're looking at something called a heat map, and we can see that there are very high concentrations in certain areas, and then there's virtually no establishments in others. And so from a business standpoint, we might look at this and say, well, this is a saturated area, and this is an underserved area. So geographers um, tend to work very, very closely with that area of uh, the economy that is in terms of location analysis. Where do we put businesses or where don't we? We also, though, geographers understand the idea of place. And this uh, Calendos is a typical Chicago corner bar, and this one happens to be underground, actually. But we begin to ask the question, well, why are the things that are in certain locations different than things in other locations. In other words, a bar is a bar is a bar, but maybe not. And that's the aspect of what we would call cultural geography. So, again, geography is a spatial science. Spatial means why and where. Where are we? Where are we relative to something else? How do things move through space and time? Geography is a spatial science. In the next lecture, we'll return to this idea and we'll talk about what it means to be a spatial or methodological discipline. So we'll see you in uh, mini lecture two for module one.